us give praise to the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. You know, you may have heard, I'm not sure if it's, I don't know how the diocese on Friday afternoon can expect us to get word out to 1,400, 1,500 families. But effective immediately mass wearing is now expected at mass. No one will be thrown out if they don't have a mask, but the bishop feels that given the rise in the uh, variant, that it is now necessary to say wear a mask. Now I don't have, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of masks sitting in there. So next week, please make a note. You'll notice the ministers will be wearing them, et cetera. We're kind of, he has not re, uh, reneged on singing. He has not insisted on social distancing, but the masks, you know, are the first step, first line of defense, let's call it. And next week, mass will again become obligatory. So it's going to be very interesting to watch this develop. But please, next week, bring a mask, wear a mask. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. It's just the way it is, so whatever. Let us all call to mind our sins, and we'll ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all the nations into the peace of your Father's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come now in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You'll come again in glory with salvation for your people at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your children, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the, desert, into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I, am for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us, as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread, bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and his mother? And how can he say I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said, stop murmuring. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I'll raise him up on the last day. It's written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I'm the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread, bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. As I tell you all the time, we don't get to pick the readings. We, we read what they give us. I certainly would not pick, and I don't think they should have picked, that for four or five weeks in a row, all you're going to hear about is the bread, the bread, the bread, I'm the bread of life, starting with the feeding of the 5,000 a couple weeks ago. There's a reason they do that, but it just it makes the same kind of topic day after day. But today we get a little bit of a different angle, a little bit of a serious talk here. That powerful line that we heard in the first reading, you, you better get up and eat, Elijah, or the, the, the journey will be too far for you, too long for you, it said. It's a very important line. And I don't get to pick the readings, okay? But at 6 o'clock tonight in Japan, the marathon will begin. Now, the marathon is the premier event in the Olympics. That's why it's done on the last day, okay? Imagine running in 95-degree heat, 26.2 miles. I mean, that's insane. It's it just, but they do it, and they know what they're doing, okay? And they know how to eat. Not bread, but carbs. And they know exactly how much energy they want in their body to withstand 95-degree heat and 26 miles. You got you to be insane to do these things, but they do it. And if you win, you're a world-famous person. The problem is that at the Steamtown Marathon or local marathons, you get people who are, you know, just people like me and you who figure, well, I'll do it once before I die. It's on my bucket list and I'll go run it. And those people don't know when to eat. 
having the pasta the night before, they, they don't necessarily know that. And they do what's called hitting the wall at about mile 20. And your body is dead. You remember the woman at the Olympics, oh, about 20 years ago, she finished running, she was almost dead. And that was an Olympic person. And your mind is saying, stop. But people are cheering and you want to continue to run. It's an amazing thing to watch hitting the wall and most people quit. Probably it's a good thing they do because they might die if they don't. They, 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 the wall is just too strong. They, they didn't eat right. You got to eat right. Hard to do. I'll never do that. I'm not that stupid to try to do that. But there's great Eucharistic implications for us. When you read the obituary, 17 year old, and it said, he died unexpectedly at home. It doesn't take too much of a genius to know that the kid hit a wall and he took his own life. And lots of kids hit lots of those walls, 17, 18. Why? Because they, they, they haven't been fed with the grace of the Eucharist. They generally don't have strong spiritual lives. They haven't gotten the energy they need. So when they hit the wall, broken relationship with the girlfriend, failing in school, drugs, the wall is too much for them. And they take their own life. You don't have to be a genius to, to read the obituaries. But it's not just the kids. A sister and I visit a lot of people. Sister's right over here, a lot of old people, you know? And you hear this more and more these days. You can live too long, Father. She's 85, maybe, nursing home, doesn't get many visits. Her friends are dead. Family doesn't live nearby. Why doesn't God just take me home? That lady's hit a wall. She's 85, not 17. And they quit. They, they quit. And they often don't have the strong spiritual lives that they have to have to withstand old age and loneliness and Alzheimer's and cancer and loneliness and whatever. And they hit a wall. And they can't get over it. They can't get under it. They can't get through it. They can't get around it. And they give up. Just like the guy in the marathon. They, they give up. It's too much. He said to Elijah, the road's going to be too long for you. That's why you have to come to church every week. Not because Father says you have to come to church every week. Or because the bishop says you have to come to church every week. But the person who receives Eucharist, you don't, it doesn't, you know, the Eucharist doesn't taste like anything. It's bland. It's supposed to be. You don't feel its effects, but they're there. And the person with a strong spiritual life can handle anything. I'm amazed at what I see people do carrying burdens that I can't imagine, but they do it. And it's because of the Eucharist. The grace is overflowing in them. Other people don't have that. Because this is not important to them. They drift away. Boy, that wall is still going to be there. Think about it. The one tennis player from Japan dropped out of Wimbledon, the biggest event of the year, for a tennis player, and she said, I'm just, it's just too much. And she, she reminds me of Jesus carrying the cross. Just, and she just had to get, she just had to drop out. You only had to win like $5 million. And she dropped out because it was too much for her. She needed a break. She needed a break. And Jesus, before he carried the cross for us, said, this is my body, take and eat. So that you'll have the strength for whatever life throws at you. This is the center of our life. Eucharist, to deal with life's burdens. I can't stop you from having them. I can't stop me from having them. But the grace of the sacraments gets us through. You know, it's funny. We're all wondering who's going to be here next week. Well, reinstating the obligation matter. And nobody knows. It's summertime, so it's kind of hard to tell fewer people go to church. Please don't ever think of Mass as an obligation. Think of it as an opportunity to grow closer to God. 
to deal with the walls you're going to run into, because they're going to come. If we have to tell you to go to Mass, something's wrong. And believe me, it's a marathon. Life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. With lots of hurdles, lots of walls. But the spiritually rich person finds joy even in the wall. The rest quit. It cannot happen to us. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. We put our prayers before Almighty God. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, that they guide us with love and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they work together in harmony for the good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from natural disasters, especially the wild, wildfires on the West Coast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our law enforcement officers, our military, and all first responders, may God guide them, protect them, and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by praying the vision prayer. Jesus, we are your people. We praise you as Savior and Lord. Deepen our commitment to you, your church, and each other. Let us all share more actively in spreading the good news of God present among us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love in service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family a family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, your spouse, Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. Thank you. 
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you've given them to be offered by the power of your love and grace you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In you we live, move, and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal, the Eucharist. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in your Paschal mystery. So with the angels and saints, we praise you as we join in a hymn of your praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper ended he took a chalice give you thanks said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope Joseph, our bishop, the order bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from ever evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always share some sign of Christ's peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
During communion, please join in singing the Supper of the Lord. So just this past week, we distributed the remains of the uh, towels that you graciously donated. We had to wait till the pools, always an issue in the city of Scranton, were up and running. And they were given out back at Connell Park in Southside, back in my neighborhood. And um, trust me, they were very well received. Probably should have also asked for swimming suits this year. There were kids swimming in, like in pajamas. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, maybe next year, but this year everything's been kind of modified, let's say. But uh, if you ever think that those towels are not very much in use and very much needed, you know, they, trust me, they are. It's just, it's just a towel, you know. Next year we'll do the swimsuits again, I'm sure. Uh, Emma here and, and Billy, one of our readers, where the kids went, among the kids went to Philadelphia last week and fed hundreds in a very difficult, hot week, but that's okay. They did a great job. And uh, this young lady actually is serving her first Mass. And do you know she's going to give you $50 because you serve your first Mass right there? 50 bucks you get. I don't think so. Uh, next, next Sunday, we don't, we don't have another reading about bread because the Feast of the Assumption falls on a Sunday, which it does every seventh year or so. So we have a little bit of a break, a little different look to the, the readings for Sunday. But next Sunday night, we're going to be doing an outdoor living rosary, weather permitting, 
who knows, those afternoon thunderstorms can be pretty nasty on hot summer days. So, but that would be a great thing to come to and participate in as we celebrate the Assumption, which falls on a Sunday. So it doesn't happen too often. Let us all stand to pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us and all of our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends. We go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.